Dixon. I'm the director. Here. I'm the director here at the Emeriti Retiree Relations Center in Roll Hall. We're just down the hall, um, in the basement level um, of of Rolf. So if you're in the building, we do have some flooding issues, but hopefully that gets resolved um, till next February. Um, my background, um, I, I got a, a bachelor's in sociology from Temple University in Philadelphia, moved out here for grad school at USC, which is, I guess, a dirty word now. Um, uh, and I did a double major in public administration and gerontology. Um, I left USC and went to the Alzheimer's Association and then went, went back to work at USC, coming to UCLA um, about four years ago. So. Um, I love talking about all things retirement. I've worked with the aging population for my entire career. So um, I do have some slides that I'm gonna share. Um, this is gonna be a pretty um, uh, open kind of dialogue. I would like, you know, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Let me just do my screen sharing because I always get this backwards. Um, current slide, and then, good. Okay, I think I move this over here. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna get started. Um, I do have my colleagues with me, Liam Liu and Maria Lubrano. Uh, they are both retirement resource specialists um, with many years of service to the campus. Uh, Maria has been here over 35 years. Lam is our new, newest recent um, hiree, and she's picked up things so fast in the retiree world. Um, so we do have someone on staff in the office, usually um, every day of the week. So um, please feel free to stop by. Um, we do um, are kind of taking appointments. We're kind of working remotely. Um, as you all probably, it's a, it's a big flux situation with everything. So my panelists, we sent out the bio, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. So thank you to Scott Silva from the RASC up in Oakland, um, Andrew Fung from Fidelity, um, Camille Carr, who is our UCLA retirement specialist. Um, unfortunately, David Lopez did have a personal emergency last night, so he will not be attending today. Um, he texted me um, some information about his slides, so I will share that with you when we get there. And then um, we also have um, Assistant Vice Chancellor Erica Chow and Interim Vice Chancellor Kathleen Komar um, from the Academic Personnel Office. They will be joining towards the end of the presentation to answer any questions and introduce themselves. Um, some more about our department. Um, we've been around for you know, over 50 years. It was initially started by Marion Broom and Chancellor Young to kind of have this interconnected space for retired staff and faculty to help them um, get personalized service for pre-retirement planning, to advocate on their behalf for services and campus inclusion. Um, and we've been a part of the Chancellor's office ever since. Um, I report directly to um, Vice Chancellor Michael Levine, um, and we advocate and support all retirees um, for every part of their retirement planning and post-retirement campus engagement. We do so many different programs, and I'll have Maria and Lam put our links in the, in the chat so you can check out our website. Um, Due to COVID, of course, we had to start a YouTube channel. So all of our Zooms are recorded, put on our YouTube channel um, for things that are happening quickly as COVID was the past two years. We started a Twitter account. So we were updating our retirees as to what's happening with vaccines, what's happening with campus closures. And it was just our way of being able to stay connected and communicate in real time with our retirees. Um, our department's been really big and really a big force with the campus age-friendly initiative. We um, work with the EDI department about inclusion for older populations on campus and also diversity of some of our programs and getting more um, acknowledgement for the work that older adults play in our lives and also as our staff and faculty. It's not just uh, retirees and staff, but also there's older students, 
there's older people visiting, there's community members that may be of an older clientele that do come visit campus, parents, things like that. So we, we really have become um, uh, spearheading this age-friendly initiative um, with the Simmel Institute to showcase kind of that retirees, even though post-retirement, are still wanting and able to be uh, engaged with the campus. Um, it's, I always give the analogy, it's not like retiring from Wells Fargo, nothing against Wells Fargo, but a lot of the retirees from UCLA have 20, 30, even 40 years of service. And when the retirement thoughts come in their head, they still wanna be engaged with the campus. For many of you, this is probably some part of your identity. And we want to keep you engaged with the campus. And we um, have these different events for you to stay engaged um, in the campus. So uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be a brief retirement over overview. Normally, um, our workshops are about three hours. They take place um, in January and February. Uh, for January, we have three um, sessions. And I'll show that on, let's see, on our website. I pulled that up. Hold on one second. Of course, I have too many windows open. Oh, here we go. So for our website, um, you can see that we have our different programs here. Um, if you go to staff and faculty resources, we have our faculty retirement liaison, also our retirement workshops for faculty and our staff retirement workshops. So we do these every year. As I mentioned, um, some are a three-part series, some are a two-part series, and we wanna make sure that people have the information that they need to make wise choices with retirement and also plan um, appropriately. So let's go back to the slides, okay. Um, so for UCRP benefits, um, you know, anyone hired with an eligible appointment for 50% time, work 1,000 hours in 12-month period, also reduced for academic appointments. Most, most employees are eligible. Um, there's the 2016 tier about being able to choose your retirement participation, five or more years of service credit, um, age 50 and over, or 55 and an inactive member. So I will um, ask Scott, is there anything in general you wanna say about retirement benefits before I move on? I'm oh, sorry. you're on no, mute. No, no, go ahead. Perfect. I, I think I was there. Yeah, no, no, you covered a good summary there. Let me know if there's anything I can clarify, but no, that's, that's good so far. Great. Um, so again, your retirement <clears throat> benefits depend on your membership classification. There's a number of different retirement tiers. If you would like um, a booklet for your retirement tier, please come down to the office and get it. Or you can email our office and we can email you a, a digital copy. You'll be able to see what your membership classification comes with, how the tiers different work. Um, if you've ever left UC and come back, you might be in multiple tiers. So all the benefits you're available for are based on your age of retirement, how much service credit you have, and your highest average compensation plan. So all of those are input into a fancy calculation and it spits out a number for your basic retirement income. Am I okay there, Camille? And <laughs> Scott, good. Um, so service credit, based on your actual time worked. Um, and this one kind of, I've had people come to our office who were um, missing service credit or if they were a student at some point and did a student intern or student employee, their service credit might not be reflective of their time as a student or if they were a contracted employee or a temporary employee, those things do not count toward your service credit. So um, you can definitely go on, on a, a website and I'll go, mention that in the next slide to figure out what your service credit looks like and to figure out your retirement estimate income if you're considering retirement. 
Um, your highest compensation plan does not include overtime, summer salary for those who are faculty, or anything that goes over the covered limit. So we often talk to retirees who are maxed out, and that's, you know, if you reach a certain number of service credit years, you, you're maxed out. There, there's not going to be more than you get than 100% of compensation. Um, so I mentioned about this um, retirement estimator. So um, if you go to UC Rays, because UC loves acronyms, um, it's retirement at your service. It's different than what you may have used with UC Path. So um, you can uh, go to the link that um, I, I'll have Maria and Lam put on the website. You go to there to check your profile, check your service credit, and you can generate your estimate. So this estimate is just, you know, an estimate. The further out you estimate it, there are possibilities that it might not be as accurate. So most people do this when they're about, I would say 90 days out, maybe 120. Um, is that correct, Camille and, and Scott, as far as doing these retirement estimates for accuracy? Yeah, I mean, the, the estimates, like you said, are for more, they're more, the further out they go, the more you rely on assumptions. And so the more variables that could change by the time you get to retirement. So they are the closest to the actual within three to four months of your retirement, but you can run estimates. They're pretty factual, even if you do six months out a year out, even just for planning purposes. So don't be shy to use the tool to, um, you know, for planning purposes, but they are going to be most accurate the closer you are to your retirement date. Yeah, and I've run these estimates myself just to see what they would look like. Um, so there, as you see at the bottom, there's different options. There's the lifetime pension amount and also a one-time payment. So, and I'm pretty sure um, this is irrevocable, correct, Scott? Once you make a decision between a lump sum versus a pension, that's it. There, there's no take backsies. So um, you have to either kind of weigh your options. If you are great at money management and you just want that big check that for this estimated here, as you can see, um, this 829 number, that would be a one-time payment that would be issued to this person. There's um, pros and cons, obviously. So if you take a lump sum, you know, you can do your due diligence and invest that money somewhere else. You can take that money and go to Vegas. It's whatever you want to do with it. Um, I think most people gear towards taking that lifetime pension. I know that's why I left USC to come to UCLA because I want that pension for my life and my, um, you know, just, it's predictable. It's security. Um, uh, if you worked with, um, uh, other agencies, you can get other for, uh, income with, with your pension. And it also has health insurance with, if you get a lump sum, you're on your own for health insurance for however long that money is before it runs out. So um, Camille, please let me know if I'm missing anything or if I'm going too fast, I'll definitely go back to a slide. Just um, someone let me know. Um, so speaking of health benefits, uh, when you retire, you still get medical, dental, legal, vision, and death and dis dismemberment. So that's something you have to weigh in. You know, if you take a lump sum, you know, you're on the um, the market for your own benefits, and that could get pretty expensive. So to be eligible for benefits um, in retirement, you have to enroll into a UCLA health coverage plan, at least 10 years of service credits and you get the pension retirement income, um, and you have to retire within 120 days of the day you separate. These are all just things that are logistics that you'll learn more about. Um, what you wanna do is when you're thinking of retirement, we're so lucky to have two retirement counselors at UCLA. Not all UC campuses have on-campus um, retirement counselors. Um, I'll tell you more about, about the, the two different ones we have here down the line, but um, make an appointment with your retirement counselor. These are things that you're able to um, learn more about what your benefits are as a UCLA employee. Um, there are some people who 
leave on retirement and come back on something called recall. Um, you know, for example, if you're an expert in your field and um, the Department of History wants you to come back and teach one class a quarter or something like that, you can negotiate um, your coming back as a recall employee up to 43%. So there's more details to that. Again, um, these retirement workshops are about three hours. So these are some things you can talk to your retirement counselor about. Um, I just got these figures just as a general slide, because as you might know, um, health insurance goes up every year. It rarely goes down, but these are just some examples of the different insurance premiums from last year. Um, these are different plans you can choose from. You can see how much UC contributes versus how much you contribute as a retiree here. If you're of Medicare age, you can see how much that comes in there. So I just wanted to give you like a screenshot of the different plans that are available post-retirement. Um, every year around October, I work with human resources and our healthcare facilitator to have open enrollment webinars just for retirees, because there's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to the health insurance for our retirees. Um, again, there, there's different plans. If you're of Medicare age, you can choose from the different Medicare plans. You can choose the, the, the non-Medicare plans. Um, it really depends on, you know, what you've had as a current employee. You might want to keep that throughout being a retiree. You could choose to um, take a different plan. Um, and then there's also options down here at the bottom. If you move out of California, we have so many retirees that just want to not deal with the expenses of being retired in one of the highest tax states in the country. So if you decide to move out of state, you um, will be given a stipend to purchase your own insurance. Am I quoting that correct, Scott and Camille? Yeah, you get a reimbursement account that gets that gets deposited money in each year for you and your dependents, and then you can use those funds to help pay for any of your out-of-pocket expenses, your premiums, your co-insurance, your co-pays, Medicare Part B. Um, so it's a pretty good plan. It allows you to have you know something that's more targeted to where you live and more affordable to that area and, and the coverage of health or the medical services that are in that area. Does that also include out of the country? <clears throat> it's just for it's just for in the United States. Um, so if you're all your family's in Medicare and you're outside of California, but still within the U.S., then you can have the um, coordinator program. If you live outside of the country, um, you can either one do um, a PPO plan like UC Care because Medicare doesn't cover outside the United States. Um, or um, what many people do who go to you know other countries that might have socialized medicine, they may not need coverage, so they suspend their UC coverage um, until you know they come back. So there's different options, but you can have coverage worldwide. It just depends on on where you are. But that um, um, the PPO plan would cover you anywhere. Yeah. So that's another big question we get every year. We have um, so our total database has about sixteen thousand UCLA retirees. Um, we're one of the biggest. I think they, UC Davis has about. Um, 25, 30 retired, 25, 30,000 retirees. Um, UC Berkeley has also about 40,000 retirees. And then we're, um, we have, like I said, about 16,000. Um, the other campuses, Irvine, San Diego, have smaller um, retiree populations. But this is one of the biggest questions we get is, I wanna move to my family's town in Connecticut or Alabama, or just go live in, Europe. So um, it's definitely an option if you're moving out of um, out of California to have that um, money deposited and be able to get your your health care. Um, so now this is another question we get pretty often is what if I'm retiring, but my partner is not. So there are options for split family partner plans. And this is something where, um, you know, if a spouse is still working, but you're retiring, how to get your insurance coordinated with either Medicare or your um, not retired 
age uh, partner. Um, any additional information on this slide, Camille? Think we can move on. I'm sorry, I was addressing the chat box. What was the question? Oh, sorry. Um, any other comments about a split family partner plan that I might be missing? Um, the most common, no, the most common concern we get about that is how old we can insure our children, which is to age 26. Children can be on the insurance until age 26. And if the retiree and or spouse becomes Medicare eligible, the plan will be split so that the Medicare eligible recipient has their UC retiree insurance coordinated with Medicare, the child can still stay on the insurance. Except when it comes to the health savings plan, once a member is eligible for the health uh, for Medicare, they have to be removed from the health savings plan. Okay, thank you. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, a different uh, additional benefits, legal, um, there's still ARAG is going on, you can still have to do that. The vision plan, homeowners, renters, auto insurance, and even pet insurance. Um, I have my dog under Nationwide, so um, Nationwide's available for your, your pets. But things that end at retirement, your life insurance, supplemental health, your FSA, and your disability. Those do not continue into retirement. Um, and again, you can reach out to your retirement counselor to learn more about what options those are post-retirement. Okay, so if you're ready to retire, and I see a few chats that people are wondering about retirement. So it's a lot of information. This is, like I said, just a snapshot. So you, the best options are for you to attend a UC retirement planning presentation. Um, there is the UCOP website that we will share to do one of those um, presentations. As I mentioned, go over your retirement estimate and your retirement savings balance so that you're able to see what your balances are. Um, there is kind of a retirement season. So a lot of people retire um, between May, June uh, for the cost of living increase, some academic appointments wait until the um, August or October for other reasons with their classes or their funding for the grants they may be on. So the best way is to schedule an appointment with your retirement counselor, um, talk to Fidelity. Um, uh, our director on, on the line, uh, Andrew, does one-on-one -on -one consultations. Um, we might be able to have those be in person. It really depends on the comfort level of um, our soon to be retirees, but we have a pretty nice space here for a large conference room. So if you're wanting that one-on-one -on -one meeting with Fidelity about your DCP and 403B, Andrew, F Andrew Fung is the one to talk to about that, um, project your social security benefit, and you might have benefits from other employers. If you've ever had another job that had a pension that or 403B, all that stuff gets rolled into your, your estimate. Um, talk to your tax or your financial professional and just make sure your, your personal finances are, are ready because when you're retiring, it could be a very scary thing. It's up there with other life decisions for marriage, divorce, kids. Um, retirement's a huge um, decision to decide on. Um, I do have this link here, so I'll show you some classes that are coming up. Let me see. Oh, let me share the other screen. Um, so, as I mentioned, UCOP, um, the Office of the President, has workshops uh, virtually. So that is here. Share this one. Okay. So if you go to myucretirement.com, you can see these are all the classes for March. Can everyone see that okay? Thumbs up? I think so. Okay, good, perfect. Um, then you can see the classes here for April. So they go over the UC Retirement Savings Plan, the fundamentals, your debt, building your future. All these classes, I believe are still held virtually. So you would just click on there, register for your classes. Um, and then you can keep doing these courses. There's, if you miss one, you can do it in May. 
um, June. They have the whole summer here for you to um, learn more about retirement so you can kind of see what your options are and, and go from there and making the best choice for you and your, your family. Uh, let's get this one, okay. I'm gonna move all my pieces back over one second. Okay, so for Fidelity, we work hand in hand with our um, Fidelity investors um, and our investment company. Um, all the workshops there from, from Andrew are about building your retirement income plan. I've had my one-on-one with Andrew to like get me situated so I know um, how much I can reasonably afford to put away every month to kind of maximize my, my, my income in retirement and what to do with your UC accounts. Um, I see a couple comments about DCP and 403B and 457. So um, is there anything brief you want to mention, Andrew, about people um, contacting you about their financial planning part? Sure, yeah. I mean, um, welcome everyone to, uh, I've changed my name to my email address and I think Aisha's going to put that up later as well, but feel free to email me directly. Uh, if you want to set up some time to chat, we can you know, definitely put something on the calendar and uh, discuss you know, anything around financial planning, discuss anything around the UC Retirement Savings Program accounts. If you're you know, looking to put away some extra savings, which we highly recommend, and you're um, you know, wondering about the tax benefits or contribution limits, these are all things that we can um, dive in a little bit deeper uh, into your situation and figure out what might be the best path forward. So um, yeah, definitely welcome anybody to to reach out and we can discuss that. And maybe the last thing I'll just say is, you know, I know you should cover some of the classes that are ready, but um, we do also offer these classes or these presentations um, in department meetings or group meetings. So, you know, if you all belong to, you know, different departments or groups around campus, we, you know, we welcome you to reach out to us and we can always set up, um, you know, individual uh, presentations for your groups as well. So you don't have to just join these these big, you know, uh, system-wide events. But yeah, that's what I'll do. Are you still doing virtual one-on-ones or anything in person? Yeah, I mean, everything's virtual right now. Um, I think, you know, it, again, if there is a, uh, you know, request for in-person, we can definitely make that work. So just, you know, reach out to me, let me know, and I'm happy to uh, figure that out. Thank you. Yeah, one of my goals as a department is to do more of these kind of um, small one-on-one um, -on -one kind of uh, retirement workshops with different departments. So if you have colleagues in whatever department and you wanna have a similar program with just your department, send us an email, let us know. Um, Andrew could also do the same thing. He can have just a small financial retirement workshop and it'll be all things money and that way um, you don't have to attend a full-on three-hour presentation you can kind of just get the nuts and bolts of the financial part of the the UC defined contribution plan and, and other things like that so um, yeah please reach out to Andrew he's um, great and able to go through your figures for you um, so let's say you are ready to retire and you wanna leave, I think someone said in the chat, June or July, you can start your retirement, you can initiate it um, pick within 90 days of your retirement date. That's why I always kind of say March and April, kind of May is our big retirement season. Every year we help um, about 700 retirees um, go through the process of getting the information, um, doing parking permits, doing brewing cards, um, setting up meetings with, you know, the, will help coordinate you with your retirement council if you need support with that. Um, but as I mentioned, you go to the UC raise and you just do your uh, retirement estimate and then you can print out your personal retirement profile. You can kind of get that information um, or go online and get your initiation packet form as well. Um, in reviewing your personal retirement profile, uh, we have retirement handbooks that is something you might just want to come down to the office and pick up um, one of our handbooks. You can read it cover to cover. You can call the RASC up in Oakland to talk about your retirement options. Um, but you can do all your retirement elections 
on UC Rays or on paper with the election planning worksheet with your retirement counselor. So that was kind of more of the nuts and bolts for everybody. Now, when it comes to those who are just faculty here, I'm not quite sure how many are faculty members, but we'll touch base a little bit on this. Um, so right now, if you're thinking of retiring as a faculty member, make sure you're setting up your access to key websites. If that is um, different things with the library, access to journals, things like that, you wanna make sure you're talking to Bruin online to make sure you still have access to whatever grants, NIH, things you're working on. So that way post-retirement, you're still able to log in and do those essential things. Um, there is some conversations with academic personnel about your sabbatical credits, um, making pathway agreements. Um, and about three or four months before, you start to navigate the process of retirement on UC Rays. So I did wanna pause here to like take any questions about general information before I keep diving more into faculty. So um, do you normally just do unmute and ask questions, Ebony? Yes, please, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself or use the um, raise your hand feature so I can call on you in order or feel free to put it in the chat as well. Yeah, we'll take a few minutes to just answer questions before we go on to, to faculty. It's a bit more of juggling when it comes to faculty um, and the process for that retirement. Okay, mm, I don't think I see any questions. Yeah, real quick, I've got a, I've got a ways to go. Mine, so mine is June Monday, June thirtieth, two thousand thirty-one. So I've got nine years basically. Phew. But anyway, I was I was wondering uh, the idea of getting a counselor. How, how what's the process for that? Okay, um, that's coming up in the next slide. But the okay. retirement counselors are broken up by the alphabet. Okay. A through L is Camille. Wait, A through K. JKL. Yeah, A through K is Camille Carr, um, who's on is on the Zoom now. And I'll, I'll nice have your contact Camille. information. I guess we'll be following up. Yes. And then L through Z is um, Robert Lariva. Um, so those are our two retirement counselors. As I mentioned, these retirement counselors are something special because a lot of the other UCs um, got rid of those positions. And it's so great to have an on-campus person to go talk to instead of calling a 1-800 number. Okay, um, Jamika? I'll make it quick. Um, for those of us who are a long, long ways from retirement, um, is it best for us to, to just meet with a counselor to better understand how we might maximize our, our opportunities, especially if it's a situation where maybe we started in the savings plan and now we're eligible for the pension plan and kind of debating back and forth, does it make sense to switch or you know, should I stay put? Is, is there a seminar for that or should we set up an individual appointment? I think that's kind of twofold. Um, we always talk about our department is geared towards people within five years of retirement, but we are available for all staff and faculty. So I think if you're thinking financially, it's probably best to start meeting with Andrew now so you can know how much you wanna put away, um, what you can afford to put away, and he'll, he'll work with you on that financial aspect. Um, as far as the counselors, Camille, I think you probably would not want someone so far out, are you are you with the five year window as well, or what do you think? I think that it's you know you can look out. It's good to start planning. I mean, it's always good to start planning because if you start to go online and you start generating estimates and you realize that the income might not be what you expect from this particular source, being UCRP. That's when you also want to talk to Andrew about how to maximize your retirement savings and investments that are in a, that will be in addition to your UCRP. So it's always good to to of course ask and everything. We just ask to please note that um, July 1st is our really 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 big retirement season. So usually from April 1st until maybe mid July, we're 
clamp down with those people who are immediately retiring. So if you're a few years out, we might ask you, hey, can you wait until after summer so that we can tend to these July 1st retirees first? That's our only real caveat, you know. Um, but I think it's always good to look at it because it's important to know what you're going to, your future. It's always good to plan. Eddie Murphy used to say, no one plans to fail. They just fail to plan. So yeah, look at whatever you can. So one of my predecessors, um, her name is Eddie Murphy. Um, she was one of the, the previous directors here. So when we would have lunch, um, we would, you know, go, I would go out with Eddie Murphy. And of course she got the best seat to the restaurant because she would just call. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with Eddie Murphy. She was here for how many years? A long time. Um, and she was kind of one of my mentors um, to all things UCLA because I was a full on Trojan and was just, very not interested, but um, Eddie Murphy has been a, a great person to, to have worked with and I, I call her a friend now, so we still stay in touch, but um, absolutely. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, and, and, and Aisha, if I, could, if I could add really quickly, I, I, I heard in the question that the, the person was asking or that they were potentially initially selected the savings choice plan and might be eligible now for pension and kind of understanding that conversation as well. And so I, I did want to mention, I mean, I think Andrew is probably a really good resource to talk about, you know, if you want questions about whether it's the right time to switch to pension choice, but also to let you know, we are gonna be, um, at least in the next couple of months, we're gonna be trying to launch a new webinar that talks about the second choice window um, and and to allow people, you know, more information on what that choice really means and, and the ins and outs of that. So um, it is a new program that we implemented. The second choice window first started last year. So there are some resources on UCNet that talk about that as well, that just give you some good information on, you know, what the pluses and minuses are in, in making that choice. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, we will be um, hopefully launching a, a webinar that um, people can attend as well to learn more about it. So just other resources that are available. At, I thought I had mentioned. Yeah, I think that's pretty new because at one point you had to pick either or, but they did allow for a one-time change if you decided you wanted to go to pension or from pension. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the faculty information. So if you are a Senate faculty member with a Senate title, um, you can do a pathway to retirement. And this is kind of something you map out with your department and your dean um, and the vice chancellor of academic personnel. There are pre and post retirement negotiations that can happen. This is something where you'll work this out with your department chair to kind of figure out what retirement looks like for you. Um, and for those who are in any academic series, these are post retirement conditions, Dean's final sign off. And then I will read what David said in his email to me about he wanted to talk about on, on his slide. So let me just... Uh, I should have had it pulled up earlier. Sorry. Um, uh, and just more about the cost of living increase. He had questions about that. Um, but he wants to urge all academic appointments to contact him with whatever questions you have. And I very um, uh, include younger colleagues. It's never too soon to begin replanning for retirement. So um, David Lopez, like I said, I'll, I'll get you there the contact information later. Um, so when you're thinking as a faculty member, when you're thinking of things to retire, these are things to kind of think about. Reducing your teaching and your service, your current office space, if you can negotiate keeping your office for two, three years, your research space, if you want to have a research professional title at retirement, you can integrate your sabbatical plans, and how funding will continue um, for your research and then doing recall teaching. These are all things that you'll discuss with um, through academic personnel and David Lopez can help you negotiate that. So um, with academic personnel, um, you think about your emeriti rights. You, you have the ability to keep that emerita, emeritus title in your academic Senate membership and things that kind of come with that, voting rights, um, Senate meetings and sitting, sitting com Senate committees. Um, and you get to use that title as an emerita professor upon retirement. Um, as I mentioned, the pathways is something that you work with your department. You can choose to develop a plan with them to review whatever approval you want with your dean and the VC of academic personnel. 
Um, and thankfully, we do have our, our colleagues with APL on here as well. Um, so I will let uh, see Erica introduce herself briefly and then Kathy. But I do have the website here for additional APO resources. Um, hi, Erica. Hi. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Chow. I'm the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Academic Personnel at UCLA. Um, I see some very familiar names um, on the screen who I've had the pleasure of working with for many, many years. Um, I, gosh, I started, you know, working on, on the IRB and uh, performing arts, and then I went over to the college, jumped around in humanities and social sciences for a little bit. Um, so uh, went over to a school on the other side of town, which Aisha is very familiar with. Um, my hand does not do what hers just did. I can say that um, it's actually uh, physically impossible. Um, go Bruins. But I'm very, then Anderson brought me back and I've been here ever since. So really nice to see everybody. And just like I said, see some very familiar um, faces and names. So, so as I mentioned in the beginning, um, uh, Michael Levine is now interim executive vice provost since Emily Carter left last summer. So as he is out doing IEVCP things, um, Kathleen Komar was appointed in October last uh, fall to help us with um, all things academic personnel. So Kathleen. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself and say I'm the Mike Levine surrogate at the moment. Um, I'm the acting, the interim vice provost for academic personnel, uh, and I'm standing in for Mike. Usually, I serve as his special assistant to um, provide commentary on dossiers and things. At the moment, I'm covering his job and learning a lot of things that he did that I was unaware he did when I was just looking at uh, academic personnel dossiers. But I wanted to say that Aisha and David Lopez have been phenomenal in terms of um, both keeping track of, advocating for, um, knowing about uh, retirement rights, which I think are, are really important. Uh, and they've been great resources in terms of people running into problems um, with retirement issues. And they, they know who to contact and, um, and how to uh, help us apply pressure where we need to. So I would just like to thank Aisha and David for the incredible job that they're doing. And if I can do anything to be of help to you, let me know. Great, thank you. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, these are something where there's lots of moving pieces to um, academic personnel and even retiring as a staff. So um, there's a few things here about, you know, um, teaching in a department, paid or unpaid, continuing your research activities, that recall appointment after, after retirement you can do, um, and you get to keep your email, which is kind of a big, big deal for a retired faculty. Um, so your departmental email will stay. For those who are retired staff, you do not keep your departmental email. You will go to a, a G UCLA account. Um, so there's a full range of benefits and rights that you can find out more on APO's website. Um, and discuss more in the future. So I've talked a lot about David Lopez. This is his information. Um, he, you can look at us on our website as well. So he's got his own web page to go over all things for faculty information. He's really accessible. He definitely will tell you like it is. So don't hesitate to ask any kind of questions to uh, learn more information about your faculty retirement. Um, and then this is uh, the information for Kathleen Comar and Erica Chow. And if your faculty can learn more from the APO website here as well. And I'll be glad to send these slides over to Ebony post, um, post presentation. And I'll upload this video to our swanky YouTube channel so you can see that as well. Uh, so we talked a lot about everything. Um, we'll do another Q&A uh, in about two more slides. Um, so as I mentioned, the campus contact information, Camille Carr, Robert LaRiva, we've talked about the RASC a lot, and that is the Retirement Administration Service Center. A lot of these retirement things for all 10 campuses, they may start on a local level, but they get funneled up to Oakland. So if you ever have issues post-retirement, um, we can help you a little bit here in our office, but if it comes down to pension questions, next of kin, 
all that stuff we do. Um, uh, we are your refor referral and resource to get to in touch with the RASC. Um, Andrew's here as well for Fidelity. And we also have a healthcare facilitator. So all those slides that I talked about, health insurance and Medicare, Medi um, non-Medicare, Bridget Sheehan Watanabe is our go-to healthcare facilitator. She could not be here today, but um, as I mentioned during open enrollment, she has amazing webinars just for retirees. And we're so lucky to have the support from CHR to do this every year. So if you are retiring in the summer, you'll definitely um, want to want to reach out to us to do the webinar on open enrollment for the fall so you can know what the plans are changing and the cost of them. And then you have my email there as well as below. Um, so if your head's not spinning enough, how can you stay connected post-retirement? So UC has a new dimensions newsletter that you'll just automatically get via um, paper. I think they still have paper newsletters that go out. There's my, C, my UC retirement website. Um, and then uh, our local resources. We have a very robust Emeriti Association and a retiree association, um, similar to what you would join if you were alumni from UCLA. It's the same thing. We have retiree associations in Emeriti, and all the programs and events that we do are geared towards retire retirees. So if you want to do um, a poker club, a hike, or get to know other UC retirees, um, you can check out their website. You can even join as an active staff. I'm an active member of the Retirees Association. And then our ERRC website as well. So that way you don't have to wait till retirement to um, start using some of these resources. Um, and you can probably see other colleagues that you may know have retired. So as I mentioned before, you know, our department is to provide this overarching, sometimes too broad of a comprehensive approach to retirement because we want to connect Bruins to resources that focus on well-being. Um, relationship building, personal growth, and to keep you engaged with the campus if you choose to be. So um, we, with the Emeriti and the Retiree Association, we are the on-campus liaison for both of those groups. So anytime they have an event or a program, we help spread the word, we help get campus space, we help um, coordinate lunch or parking, wherever, whatever we can do to support activities that go on around campus. Um, one of our biggest uh, programs we have coming up, we have three. We have a recital at the Chancellor's Residence with Mrs. Block. Every year we get invited to have these private um, music recitals with uh, music school students. So we have a program coming up in April and May for the music recital. And as soon as the faculty club is open, we will have more programs at the faculty center, um, starting with an art show. A lot of our retirees um, have this second act where post-retirement, they take up sculpturing or painting or knitting. And we just have an annual show to showcase you know, all these people who maybe were not into painting, you know, when they were working, but now they have free time during retirement, they've become really wonderful artists. And we try to share that at the faculty center. So as I mentioned, we report to um, the VC of academic personnel. Um, we have active 11,000 retired faculty and staff, and then another 5,000 for next of kin, or people who are associates of UCLA. So your partner, your loved one, um, your next of kin, they can still stay in touch with us and they can still be a part of the campus. Cause as I mentioned, it's not just working at UCLA, it becomes part of your identity and that includes your spouse as well or your partner. Um, as I mentioned, it's myself. We're a really small, mighty team of three. Um, and we are, uh, you know, have some modified operations. We're working remotely a few days, but we, we have someone on campus, um, you know, five days a week. So please feel free to email us or call us if you need to um, have an appointment or come downstairs to just say hi, because we're in the basement and we, we want people to come say hello. So um, like I said, that was a lot of stuff to take in. So we can definitely do more questions. 
Um, if there's anything I may have missed or did too fast, please Camille or Scott or Andrew fill us in as to anything I may have missed for um, this presentation. Or was I just that great? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we'll take questions. You, we'll take you, were, questions. you were that great, Aisha, and thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to use the uh, hand feature, raise hand feature, or throw it in the chat. Well, I stumped right. everybody. I think I think you did. Well, I'd like to thank Aisha and her lovely crew of folks that know retirement. It was very, very helpful for folks that have been here 20 plus years or even just starting their careers. It's great to be ahead of the game and be proactive in planning for your retirement. And like Aisha said, UCLA has a great, great, wonderful retirement plan. And we are very, very blessed to have our retirement counselors because other UCs do not. So please take advantage. And I will, as soon as I receive the slides from Aisha and I download and figure out what I'm doing with this video, I will send it out <laughs> to the entire listserv and Aisha will post it onto the YouTube channel as well. A few things for BSFA, you guys should have received the survey from me. I've heard some weird glitches from the ACE survey. So I will have them fix that immediately so you can participate in that ACE survey for the upcoming um, event that we're having on supporting Black Bruins. And Vusi, who always shines and does all of our events for BSFA is in the building. So Vusi, do you wanna give a quick update about the beloved community and what's coming up and how everyone in this room should be able to support and attend and all of that great stuff? Yeah. So. Uh... Lucy Azani, I'm the uh, Vice President for Special Programs and Community Engagement. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on for the past eight years is the uh, Beloved Community Initiative. It kicks off the third Tuesday of April to the fourth Tuesday of April. Uh, we've got a few special lead-in events or, or uh, launch events. One would be a screening of a film called Called Up, the Emmett Ashford story. Emmett Ashford was the first Black umpire in the Major League Baseball. We're going to be doing a screening 7 p.m., on Friday, April 15th, which is Jackie Robinson Day. He was, in, uh, Emmett Asher was inspired by Jackie Robinson. So that'll be at the uh, UCLA Alumni, I mean the Hall of Fame uh, room. So we'll be there on uh, in person, 7 p.m. Uh, Friday, April 15th. And then we have a, a, a reading of a play called Our Town, which will be in person as well at the Little Theater over in, um, on, on campus. Uh, and, and that will be, I, you know, I'm not certain of the time. I want to say 3 p.m., but you know, more details to come. And then we'll have a, a week of activities beginning the third Tuesday of April as well. So a couple of award presentations and um, lectures and things of that nature. So I look forward to sharing those details with folks uh, as we move forward. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Aisha, Kathleen, Erica, Andrew, Scott, Camille, and I hope I didn't miss Erica. Thank you all so much for your time and answering all of our questions. And we truly appreciate everything you all do for the university. And Andrew, I'll be reaching out to you soon about some money stuff. And Scott, same thing. So you guys all take care, enjoy the rest of your week and have a good Friday off. Don't forget, Friday's not a work day, y'all. Take care. Thank Great you. job, Ebony. All right.